I want to welcome you all to Texas Silver. Uh, before we get into this video, I wanted to show you all this really quick because I think this is really neat. But my buddy uh, Chris Gentry that I had uh, for the rocket stove, he finally finished uh, my pit here. And so I wanted to show you all the features with that. I think it's really neat. Uh, that way, if someone was thinking about uh, having something like this built, it'll just give you some ideas. Uh, but what was funny is right before I uh, started filming this, I actually see the marks in this pan right here. Uh, those were actually from the bacon pieces that I cooked on the first video that I was ever in with Jeremiah when he came here. I guess it was two and a half years ago. Okay, I'll try and explain what we're looking at here. Uh, so this was an end cap to some sort of oil well drum. It's probably half an inch thick. Uh, Chris cut a hole in the bottom, that way the ash can fall down there. Gave it three legs. Uh, this right here allows me to adjust the height of the grill uh, and also the wok. And I can swing out the grill or swing the wok over just depending on which one that I wanna use. Also, I can flip this around and I can hang a pot from this over there. So I'll kind of give a demonstration I'm gonna go ahead and put down the camera that way y'all can see how this thing works, but it's it's really neat. Uh, and also the main thing I use it for is just a fire pit if I wanna come out here and sit around a fire. And here are the joys of owning goats. There's goat presence all over the place. Okay, so what you start with is your actual fire pit. Uh, and then it has this right here that I can tighten and loosen and add all the different attachments to it. So the grill goes in here and obviously I can tighten it and raise and lower this to the height that I want. I can swing out, then I can hang a pot over the fire if I want. See, I need that higher, then boom, I have that, okay? And then, then I have the walk attachment. So then your, your walk attachment goes in here and there's actually holes here that I can put a pin if I wanted it at different heights. Uh, but also I can raise and lower the, uh, the main piece here. And then your walk goes in here. And that's how this thing works. It's pretty neat. So I had a buddy that actually built me a pit and it rotted out. And so the actual grill and walk and all that part was built by my other buddy. But Chris is the one that uh, finished it out. So shout out to Chris, Chris Gentry. I appreciate it. I love it. Uh, I actually had a fire in it the other night and it's great. Uh, let's get into the rest of this video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, real quick though, uh, I wanted to do a birthday wish. Uh, it's a very, very important and big birthday today that I wanted to give a shout out to. And I'm sure y'all probably already guessed it, but yes, it's Athena's birthday. She's one year old today. Is that right? One year old? Uh, but anyway, so here she is right here. Dina, hey, sweet baby. You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? Hmm? Yeah? You wanna say hi? Yeah? Uh, so anyway, so yes, Athena is one today. Very big uh, birthday. But no, in all seriousness, no. Today is the Marine Corps birthday. The Marine Corps is 246 years old today. Semper Fi, hurrah to my Marines that follow. Um, and then also don't forget tomorrow is Veterans Day. Uh, and I just, I'm not gonna kick out another video by then. So I just wanna thank everyone that did serve in the armed forces and are serving today. It's greatly appreciated, and uh, I just wanted to give that shout out. Um, so if you can, you know, try and remember to thank a veteran tomorrow or send a text or a call and just thank them for their service. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I forgot to put this in the video, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this in. Uh, but remember, I am not giving financial advice, legal advice, uh, mental advice, anything on this channel. I'm not a financial planner or anything like that. So just remember, I'm just a guy with an iPhone uh, telling you what I do. So just remember, this is not um, financial advice. And also, let's go. I wanna welcome everyone to the channel. I appreciate everyone being here. 
Uh, if you're new, uh, welcome as well. And hopefully if you like the content that I'm putting out, you consider subscribing. Uh, also liking the video, commenting below and uh, sharing it as well. Uh, and then if you could, if you do subscribe, hit the bell notification, that way you get notified of the next one. Uh, so there's a couple channels that I follow and I follow quite a bit, but the ones that I mention on a regular basis are Revert to Means uh, and Jared is who has that channel, really smart guy, down to earth, uh, talks about some of the same things that I do. Also Jeremiah Babe, uh, and that's the name of his channel. Uh, but one that I really, really, I think, attribute all or a lot of my financial knowledge is Greg Manorino. Uh, and I'll try and remember to put a uh, link to that in the description. But Greg Manorino, uh, he's <laughs> he's a little eccentric at times, uh, gets a little carried away and a little goofy. But the, the man has been calling these markets pretty much to a T. Um Probably one of the best shows out there. He doesn't charge anything. Uh, he actually has a um, a website that's free that you can go on there, and there's all sorts of investing tools. Uh, also, he you can sign up for a newsletter, and he sends you pretty much what he's doing and alerts and stuff like that. Uh, I'm, Greg is not endorsing me. I'm not getting paid anything for this. I just think he's a great service to this community. And if you don't follow Greg Manorino, I highly recommend it. He does two videos a day. He does one in the beginning and ending of the markets. And he does one every day, uh, pretty much. And then on the weekends, uh, obviously he doesn't because the markets are closed. Uh, but um, I think I have gained probably the most knowledge from him. Uh, the stuff that he talks about is gold, silver, uh, cryptos. He talks about the stock market, the uh, debt market, uh, real estate market, crude oil, all those kind of things. And um, I, I think he is probably the most spot on or at least has been the most spot on from anyone that I do follow. Um, I guess I kind of want to give a background. Back in 2012 probably is when I started waking up that there was an issue with the financial system. Um, originally back in 2008, uh, when we had a new leader in the white house is when I really started to get concerned. But back then I was more concerned with the precious metal, um, that feeds these things. Um, I just thought it was absurd to do the gold and silver thing. Cause I was like, you can't eat it. Um, you can't protect your life with it, anything like that. Uh, but I started watching gold and silver videos and really realized the importance of sound money and real money and tangible, something that you can hold in your hands. Not saying that lead and brass are not good. You obviously need that. I talk about security all the time. And just to let y'all know, obviously y'all know that I do walk the walk. Uh, and, and speaking of, uh, there's some channels out there and I saw a video the other day that made me want to throw up. Uh, but this, this channel is talking about how this huge crash is coming, but it's pushing people into the market. Uh, as far as I know, this, this person doesn't have any type of security, but is telling you to get security. Uh, I don't even know that they even have food or water preps. You know, they, they never show any of their preps and, Again, the reason why I show you all this stuff is not, hey, look at me, look what I have. I'm just showing you all that I do walk the walk, that I'm not telling you all to get security, to get, to get food and to get water, and that I'm not doing those things myself. So anything that I tell you all on this channel, it's because I wholeheartedly believe in it and I'm doing it myself. Obviously, there still are holes in my preps and I need to always continue to, to build that. Um, but I didn't start buying precious metals until about 2016, I think was my first purchase. And then after that, I got very heavy into uh, obviously silver. I have a little bit of gold, but it's minuscule compared to the amount of silver that I have. I just think that silver is going to perform better over time. And so that's why I do silver. Uh, so I know a lot of people state that they don't have money for that. Uh, for gold, it's expensive. I wouldn't be buying gold stocks. Uh, 
you know, there, I guess you could get into some sort of gold stocks for, for pennies or dollars. Uh, I would, I would rather hold it in, in my hands, in my possession and have the physical asset. Uh, but if you can't afford gold, I understand you can get a mercury dime, probably five or $6 right now. I don't even know what those are going for. Uh, but I'm guessing it's probably about that. Uh, everyone should have a couple dollars laying around that you can go get at least a mercury dime, uh, go get uh, a one ounce coin around, uh, but I would highly recommend to, to get some of that. Um, but I guess where I was going with this also with Greg is Greg mentioned how every great empire has always failed. Uh, and I've always heard this and pretty much Every empire has always failed because of the monetary system that fails. Uh, and I believe he mentioned Rome. And so I did a little bit of digging because I wanted to, not that I didn't believe what he was telling me, but I wanted to see specifically what happened. Um, and I already knew a little bit about it. I knew, and I'll go into that. Uh, I knew about the coin clipping and uh, pretty much not printing, but diluting their, their coinage. Uh, to where eventually the, the nation became broke. Uh, so I looked into it more, and so I'm going to kind of go over these things, uh, some of the reasons that Rome fell, and it's very eerie, the similarities of what made took Rome down and what's going on today in America. So the main reasons, uh, obviously there was military reasons and stuff that, that Rome fell, uh, but essentially, the backbone of it was the economy, their financial system collapsed. So they couldn't fund the military anymore, all these wars and, and all that. Um, so where all their money was going was defending their borders and, their, and building up their military and fighting all these wars. Uh, so does that sound familiar? What have we been, we, what have we been doing? Uh, I think it was a little over $2 trillion that we spent in Iraq and over $2 trillion that we spent in Afghanistan. Uh, so there's the similarities there. Um, so over time, they took precious metals out of their coinage. So originally they started with gold and silver uh, and they were doing coin clipping. And uh, where that is, is where they take a coin and they just shave or clip the outside edge of these coins. So over time, the coins get smaller and they take those clippings and they make new coins. So essentially, they're inflating their money because they're still saying that this certain piece is worth a certain amount, but there's not as much gold or silver in that coin anymore. Um, and then after that, they slowly started diluting the amount of precious metals that were in their coinage. Uh, to where eventually they were just coated in silver and it was a brass coin or copper coin that was just covered with silver or I guess, what would that be? Um, I don't know how to explain it, but you know what I'm saying? It was just the very surface, it was like dipped in silver and over time that would rub off and all that would be left would be the brass or the copper. Uh, so we've done the same thing. Originally, the dollar was completely backed by gold, and then we partially backed it by gold, and then eventually we completely took the dollar off the gold standard. So the same thing with Rome, they did the same thing. They took precious metals out of their monetary system. So they just kept debasing their currency, and that's what we're doing. So essentially, they, were, they weren't printing money, obviously back then they didn't have printing presses, but pretty much they were diluting the value of their coinage. And we're diluting the value of the dollar. Every time the Federal Reserve prints more money, it's making all the other ones in circulation worth less. They, it, it's killing their buying power. So it takes more dollars to buy the same goods and services. So everyone is bragging about how their, their properties are becoming more valuable. No, it's the dollar's losing value. So it takes more dollars to buy the same uh, goods and services, to buy the same house. Uh, so what happened was inflation soared in, in Rome. What's going on now? We have uh, a lot of inflation and I, I would almost argue that we're starting to get on the verge of hyperinflation. Uh, this, everything's going up, energy, food, 
um, gasoline, groceries, all that stuff is, is starting to get really expensive. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we're at the beginning stages. I don't think we've seen anything yet. Uh, that's another thing that Greg talks about. Uh, Greg Manorino, he states that he thinks there's going to be three phases of this uh, inflation. And he's, he thinks that we're in the beginning stages of the second part of it. And he's saying that we've seen nothing yet. And I'm inclined to agree with him. Uh, and so that's that's what's going on in America, happened in Rome. So that's another similarity. Uh, then they were increasing taxes on their citizens. What are they doing here? Inflation is also a tax. Uh, so that's, that's another correlation right there of what Rome did and what the U.S. government's doing. They're, they're raising taxes on us. Uh, and then like when our properties are becoming worth more, then our taxes are going to go up. So even though they may not be physically raising tax rates, we're still going to pay more taxes at the pump because we're going to be paying for more taxes every time we fill up. Uh, our property taxes. And then when the goods and services become more expensive, what do we do? We pay more sales tax because we're, we're spending more money on these goods and services. Uh, another thing that happened in Rome, the super wealthy started moving their money out of the system and hiding it elsewhere. And what are the super rich doing here? They have uh, money that they're moving offshores uh, and offshore bank accounts, or they're they're finding ways to hide money. Same thing is happening here. Uh, another thing, there was a labor shortage. What's going on right now? Uh, we have, I think it's 107 million people that are out of the labor force right now. Uh, they did use a lot of slave labor back in the day, but where do a lot of our products come from? Overseas. And there's a lot of slave labor overseas as well as they're paying these people peanuts to, to do our stuff. We don't produce anything here anymore. So that's another thing. That's another similarity. And it's just scary how many things happen in Rome and all this stuff is going on here. So how could you not say that the U.S. is not headed this way? Um, so another thing that happened, two-tier society. So there was the super rich and the super poor. What's happening now? The middle class is getting wiped out. Uh, another thing, government corruption and incompetence. So the citizens lost their faith in the government. What's going on today? I don't know how many people, I don't have faith in our government. I don't know if y'all do. If y'all are here watching this channel, you probably are on the same wavelength as me. I don't have any faith in our government. Uh, I think it's completely corrupt and everything has to do with keeping the dollar in power and them keeping themselves in power and just uh, getting more money from, from all this corruption. Um, okay, so history generally doesn't repeat, but it definitely rhymes and it sounds like it's rhyming to me. Um, I could be wrong, but I really think that, that this can't be reversed. And I think the next five to six years, 10 years are going to be brutal in this country. I think we're in the beginning stages of it. And I think it's about to get ugly. All empires have fallen. And I think um, ours is going to fail. And it's because of the financial, situ uh, the, the financial system. Uh, I, I don't think the U.S. is going to be any different. I, I think... Um, I think China will probably end up being the next superpower. Uh, hopefully not. Maybe the U.S. will pull a rabbit out of their hat and back the U.S. dollar by gold. Who knows? I don't see it happening. I don't even know if the U.S. even has its gold that they claim that we do have. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're putting back your security, your food, your water, um, Home heating oil, uh, any anything that you need for this winter, put it back. I think this winter, uh, I mean, they've already stated it's going to be a, I think the word they used was a black winter. Uh, so the uh, fearless leader is warning us. So heed, heed that warning. So if you can afford it, pick up some extra canned goods, pick up some emergency food, uh, get some more uh, brass or, or freedom seeds is what I heard that they're called. So freedom seeds for these things. So what I heard was oil is predicted to get up to $120 a barrel next year and could get as high as $200 a barrel. So what are gas prices going to look like at the pump? Here, I think your unleaded gas is about $3.10 a gallon, I think is what I paid last, give or take. 
Uh, and obviously different places of the country you're paying more or less. Uh, if oil goes to $200 a barrel, you can pretty much figure that gas is probably gonna triple. If it goes to $1.20 a barrel, it's gonna double. Uh, so I couldn't even imagine filling up my truck for $10, $11 a gallon. That's, I mean, that's, that's even gonna put me in a hurt locker. Um, you do need to have cash on hand, but I would not be in the US dollars. So just have an emergency fund put back. Um, I would be putting your money into also uh, farmland, ranch land, uh, livestock, get a garden going on. Uh, gold, silver, I, I don't recommend cryptos, but if you're in it, you're making money. That's awesome. I just hope you're pulling profits. And um, I, I think this stock market is going to continue to go up like Greg states. Uh, but he said that there is going to be a crash. But I think as long as the Federal Reserve is pumping money into it, it's going to keep going up. Um, real estate, from what I understand, is starting to slow down. Uh, I did hear that now that they've lifted travel bans, that you do have foreigners that are coming in, but they're buying up real estate. But I'm guessing that it's probably your high dollar real estate and probably not so much your, your cookie cutter neighborhood stuff. Um, I don't think Fed, the Fed is going to raise rates. I know they keep talking about it. I don't think they're going to. I could be wrong. I think we're going to be at zero or near zero for a couple years. Uh, but obviously that's subject to change. Uh, I still think the deals are coming. So make sure you're keeping your powder dry. Keep some uh, obviously precious metals on the sideline and uh, also cash. That way you can jump in when these, do, when these deals do come out. Um, just remember, make sure you're training and that you're getting in shape. Those things for the most part are free or close to it. Uh, you can train with these, with uh, dry fire drills and stuff like that. You don't have to actually use um, live freedom seeds. Um, I would try and get any negative debt paid off as in school loans, credit card debt, uh, and then also get into mental shape. And, you know, if you don't, believe in God, you know, that's, that's on you. I'm not here to preach. I, I do believe in God. Uh, I do have my faith and I think that he's going to be instrumental, uh, in the future. But like I said, I'm not here to preach. So if, if you don't, I understand. And I guess I'm going to leave it there. I appreciate everyone being here for the support. I've been super slammed at work and busy. So I'm sorry I didn't get a video out, I guess, Sunday. I'm going to try and do two a week, but I don't know, it may end up being one a week, but I'll definitely try and get out what I can. So again, I appreciate everyone being here. Take care, God bless. Um, happy Veterans Day again, and Semper Fi, happy birthday Marines. Hey bunny, yeah? <laughs> I better include you or I'm gonna have some whiny babies. So here, hurry up, soak up your camera time. Do some cute stuff. Is that all you got for me? Huh? Uh, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> hey, bud. Yeah. Woody, come here. Yeah. yeah, you still like to be pitted, huh? You're such a weight boy. Yeah. You like your head scratched, huh? All right, well, I had to give you some screen time, okay? Yeah? You're getting big, bud. Cracks me up when they do this. They scratch themselves and rub down the uh, chain link. Now I guess we're going to have a... Uh, he likes to ram my leg. What do you have? Huh? Athena. What do you have? Oh, I guess she dropped it. She had a... I think it was a jawbone. Hey, they don't want to see that. Come on. Cracks me up how she snorts. Ugh, what is that? You're so weird. What are you eating? 
<sighs> yep, you're one year old, girl. Big girl. Oh, and by the way, I'm, I know y'all can't tell on film, but Bronco smells horrible because they pee on themselves. I guess that attracts the ladies. Man, I'm getting a bunch of behind shots today. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah? Hey girl. Oh my gosh. This is a family channel. What's wrong with you? What? Hey, you're my, uh, I'm gonna need you to uh, distance socially because you're getting too close. <laughs> 